Aloha and welcome to Figments, The Power of Imagination, Season 2, Episode 8. This is actually the 25th episode of the two types of figments, so that means something to me, maybe not to you, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. And this will be fun because I'm talking with my great friend Ross Rowley about postseason baseball. It's October. I love baseball. I love the postseason. And I'm going to go to a couple of National League Division Series games, so there. And I'm looking forward to that. So uh, joining me again is Colonel Retired U.S. Air Force, Ross Rowley. Hey, Ross, aloha. Aloha, Fig. Thank you for having me on. This is like the trifecta. This is my third time this, on here. You're That's a three-time awesome. three -time convicted Figments guest, which is <laughs> good. And we are going to talk about uh, imagining postseason baseball. We're going to use your knowledge of statistics Everybody who's watched before knows that you were a math major, a math professor at the Air Force Academy. A, uh, we'll call you an instant replay influencer because you influenced the adoption of, of instant replay in Major League Baseball uh, through your statistical analysis. And like you said, three-time guest, first, first that I've had. Um, we both love baseball. Uh, and you can see in this photo that I've shown on the previous two episodes, I'm a Brewers fan. This is a different shirt, so I have more than one shirt. Ross wearing his Cardinals cap. Uh, that's hole number two, isn't it, Ross? Yes, you made you, a you know, uh, hole in one on that hole. I did make a hole in one. Thanks <laughs> for bringing that up. But, but that that's that that time I won money, but I lost money to you because we had a bet between the Cardinals and the uh, Brewers that uh, which team would have the best record from August 13th on. And yours had a lot to do with the health of the team. I had faith in my Brewers. It seemed like a good bet. And then your Cardinals went on a 17 game winning streak. Did you enjoy that? I loved it. That was great. And I was asked recently by someone, is this the most fun season I've had as a fan? And I had to think about it. It's up there, you know, it's probably in the top five, but between the Mariners and the Cardinals uh, going right to the end and the 17 game streak was amazing. And it was yeah. spurred by your Brewers walk off grand yeah, slam. Folks, you've got to know that Ross does not believe in real time information. So I don't care <laughs> if I'm going to watch a game on uh, DVR or whatever. I want to know what's happening now. I'm not very patient. So I get watch updates, phone updates, karma updates of the status of games. And Ross is very insistent, especially in our golf group on Saturday, that he not hear any score from any sport other than soccer, which he doesn't appear to care about. Um, so I waited a couple hours after the Brewers walked off the Cardinals with the Grand Slam home run by Daniel Vogelbach and just sent him a smiley face with sunglasses. That's all. And it made him upset. There's a you know, it ruined my happened. day. It ruined his day. <laughs> but right Before after that, what happened? Right story. after that, what happened? It made my season is what happened after that. Uh, ruined your day, made your season, and you are very welcome. Um, yeah, that was a great day for the Brewers. I rewatched that video then. And then that that uh, 17 game streak, it wasn't just a 17 game streak i mean they played consistently excellent baseball in every phase of the game and that's fun to watch i don't care if it's your team or not really well um like you said i i felt like they were going to go on some kind of run because of injuries and they i got mm -hmm. jack flaherty back and miles michaelis back and um, a couple mm -hmm. others harrison bader was injured earlier in the year and he was already back and i felt like they had all the pieces together mm -hmm. so um, I, I guess I was right in that sense, but I, nobody can predict a 17 game winning streak. No, and uh, it, it was, like I said, fun to watch. But let's talk numbers because that's a lot more interesting than numbers other than 17. Your use of statistics, as I thought about our previous conversations, I came up with some questions I'd like you to address. And uh, regarding statistics, were any of them just not predictive or wrong in 2021? Is there anything where this year was an outlier and what usually works didn't work? Yes, and it's every year there's something that doesn't work. Let me just preface it with that. Fangraphs is probably the uh, industry leader in 
and projections for MLB baseball. Mm-hmm. And just like everybody else, nobody predicted the uh, San Francisco Giants would yep. be as good as they were. They ended up with 108 wins. Their playoff odds at the beginning of the season was 5.7%. They were only projected for 76 wins, and they exceeded that by Yeah, 31. they're at 100% playoff odds now, I think. Yes, and they it, are. If you look on fan <laughs> graphs, they'll tell you that. <laughs> and that brings me to uh, the team projections, which I think are difficult because there are two uh, influences that don't uh, – well, maybe three influences that aren't well represented statistically. One is injuries because you don't know who's going to get hurt, when. Um, the other is acquisitions and, and trade losses. But if you're the Cubs, it's trade losses. If you're most teams, it's acquisitions. Um, and the third thing is the chemistry of a team, because you don't know that in spring season. You don't in spring training. You don't know how they're going to come together. So are those – you know, those predictions that say the Giants are going to win 76 games, I think it was, are those any good at all? Or, you know, if you want to dream about your season in March, just disregard that and hope for the best. Uh, I think it's uh, the latter is what you should do. Everybody, you know, on opening day, everybody's zero and zero. They're all in first place. And so hope for the best. Like uh, my Mariners made a big run, even though, they exceeded their um, predicted wins. They were only predicted for like uh, 78 wins or something. They ended mm-hmm. up with 90. They did it with a minus 50 run differential. And we talked about that last yeah. time, how important yeah. that was for success going forward. And I even discussed it with my nephews uh, when I was on vacation. I predicted in July that this wasn't going to be sustainable. And one of my nephews said, you're right. The other one said, no, you're wrong. And the, uh, I was wrong. They, they were yeah. able to sustain that success and nearly made it to the playoffs. Yeah. We'll talk, as I said, more about that later. Um, and as I said, acquisitions make a big difference. They certainly right. did for the Brewers. Uh, one team we haven't talked about that was statistically projection wise, hugely disappointing is the Minnesota twins. I mean, they shouldn't suck. Shouldn't have sucked. They downloaded well, yes. it. Yeah, for example. But the Burrs were mired in what looked like exactly what people predicted for them. An average season, 80-something wins. And then they acquired Willie Adamas from the Tampa Bay Rays. And by the way, there's one of the best win-win deals ever because the of what that allowed the Rays to do and what it did for the Brewers. But May 22nd is officially Willie Adamas Day in, in Milwaukee because they've had one of the best records in baseball since then. And as somebody watches every game, as my wife will verify, uh, every game, uh, they, he had a tremendous team effect. Can you predict that? Can you, can you no. look at uh, how somebody plays in a certain ballpark or what they bring to a game and say, this guy is the right fit for this team or is it just magic of baseball? No, there's been a lot of debate in uh, in the statistical community over the years about, is there a clubhouse effect? You know, bring in uh, Raul Labanez, for example, to the Mariners or Ken Griffey Jr. As he's aging, uh, is that going to boost the team and pull them together and everything? And, and the answer is maybe, but you cannot quantify it. So, Willie Adamas, the effect can be quantified because he went, he ended up with four war on the season. The guy he was traded for, which he thought was a win-win, J.P. Fireisen only had 0.2 war for the Tampa Bay Rays. So I'm not sure if you're a Tampa fan, you would call that a win-win. The problem was they had the number one prospect in baseball coming up, Wander right. Franco. And so um, Willie Adamas didn't have a place to play in Tampa. So it was a win for Willie. It was a win for the Brewers. Uh, and it was sort of a um, get what, whatever you can for Tampa Bay. Well, we're sure glad that they got what they could uh, and that we got what we got because it, he made an incredible change uh, for the team. Um, Shohei Otani, who kind of ruined your Sunday. 
in the in his in the leadoff position uh, has had a year that it defies comparison. You can't just say Babe Ruth. He, really, you can't say anybody because of not just home runs, but pitching and base stealing and just total baseball player. Was there data to suggest that that was possible? No, and I will say, you know, people who compare him to Willie, uh, to Babe Ruth, um, do a disservice to Otani because he exceeded Babe Ruth when Ruth was pitching and hitting. Um, but for the first three seasons of Otani's career, he was mostly injured. He was, um, mm -hmm. you know, mediocre when he was on the field. He wasn't able to pitch most of the time because of his injuries. Um, so the statistical projection systems can't just assume as a guy, a guy's going to be healthy. Is he always going to yeah. be injured? Right. So yeah. they assume his performance going forward based on his previous performance. And it said 1.4 war for as a hitter and 1.3 as a pitcher he ended up with 8.1 overall war uh, instead of the 2.7. So, and if you tell me that you could see that coming, whether an angels fan or somebody else that you it's knew that was going to happen. No way. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the you, the predict trying to predict future performance based on past performance. We sound like stockbrokers now. Um, well, it's the only way you can do it, to be honest. Yeah, it is so difficult. And you look at the uh, challenges that Christian Yelich has failed has faced. He was an incredible ball player for several years, and he's been an average ball player. And then so was a Bellinger the MVP for the. Yes. Uh, Dodgers is less than average. Um, it may not even be on the postseason roster, possibly. You can't predict it. It just happens. And I think that illustrates this is a really difficult game. And, yeah. Uh, that's part of why I love it. Um, are, do statistics become, are there any statistics that become more valuable in the postseason? So if I'm looking, say, at the Brewers and Braves series, which, of course, I am, is there anything that, as I hope for a Brewers uh, win, I should say, well, this gives me hope, or, uh oh I'm worried about that? Uh, I'd like to say yes. I have a theory, but it's not supported by statistics. And so when we get ah. into the projections, I'll, I'll give you my theory. Well, I'll give it to you now, but I'll support it later okay. with, with my gut feel. I believe that starting pitching is the most important thing in the playoffs. And I believe if you have two really good starters, and this theory started developing back when the Diamondbacks mm -hmm. won in 2001, they had Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. That's if you pitch them twice in each series and maybe once in relief, that's four wins if they're dominant. And the same thing happened with Schilling and Pedro Martinez with Boston. And uh, mm -hmm. I see that with uh, Max Scherzer and, Arias and um, Walker Bueller yeah. in yeah. in Los Angeles, and I also see that with your team, Corbin Burns yeah. and and the the Party starters Peralta. they have, and, yeah, uh, and Brandon Woodruff and Eric Laher Laher, who's been surprisingly strong. But the next um, thing I need to do is figure out how to quantify that theory and then how to test it statistically. Which so I Corbin, haven't Bur figured out Corbin yet. Burns, who's a, a Cy Young candidate, I'm not sure how that'll work out because that is truly subjective. I'm sure that the baseball writers of America use some statistics, but um, he only pitched two innings. It was called a manager's decision when Craig Council took him out. And that, that brings into uh, focus the importance of manager's decisions in the postseason. In the postseason, when it's all on the line and it's win or go home, well, yeah, you're going to pitch them on short rest or you're going to send them deeper into a game than you might do. Or you're going to put pitch Josh Hader, for example, for two instead of one inning at the end of a game. Now we have to, sorry to say, because of the Devin Williams injury. But um, this, the human element and the statistics interact in a way that's very difficult to reconcile, it seems. Yeah, and I will praise your manager, Craig Council, for um, seemingly um, picking the right reliever at the right time uh, going back yeah. three or four years. When they were against mm -hmm. the Dodgers in the playoffs, 
he had a, a lefty starter or opener, and then he kept on bringing lefties out of the bullpen because the statistics showed that Cody Bellinger and, and all their left-handed hitters, John right. Peterson and so forth, they couldn't hit left-handed pitching. And so he just took advantage of that, and they won that series. Well, we could, we could go on and on, and we are. And we're already <laughs> behind, and we have several slides to show, including your statistical reality, sort of the ground truths of baseball is what this is. And uh, why don't you talk about those fairly briefly so we can get to our predictions? Sure. It relates to your last question. Is there anything predictive about that you can get to to the playoffs? And like I said, statistically, we can't figure it out. Um, Billy Bean in the book Moneyball basically said, my stuff, my expletive doesn't work in the playoffs, implying that this is a, a crapshoot. Um, <laughs> it's a 50-50 proposition. And to, to support that, I wrote a blog article back in 2008, and I've updated it here. Um, 34, of the, um, 34 teams have won 100 games in the wild card era. Only six won the World Series. Yeah, Seven that's incredible. wild card teams. Yeah, seven wild card teams won the, the World Series. So you're better off being a wild card team than a team with 100 wins. That's how crazy the how postseason is. Yeah. I don't know. And I look at my own team, the Mariners, 116 wins, set an all-time record. They didn't yep. even make it to the World Series. Whereas my other team, the Cardinals, won the World Series after winning only 83 games. And then um, for that blog post, I actually calculated all the playoff series. And, and it's a 49% chance of victory if you're the winning team. And it's probably, you know, gone up maybe a couple percent since then. But it's basically a, maybe. a flip of the coin. Yeah, which is why you should watch the next game and the next game. Exactly, and, yeah. And you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, that's the beauty of, of baseball in particular. I don't. I like watching the Green Bay Packers, Packers and Milwaukee Bucks, and um, but baseball's nuances are what attract me so much. So you put that to a scatter, scatter plot, cart chart. I think we call it to prove what you just said and these plots are all over the map and they means they mean everybody has a chance right exactly on the uh, vertical scale you have the number of wins and it has um, graphed against the horizontal scale which is the number of postseason wins so regular season versus postseason and mm -hmm. you can see on the the column of dots on the right side those are teams that won 11 games meaning they won the world series but those dots are, you know, pretty much distributed like all the rest of the dots are exactly. around the mean of about, you know, 90 something wins for, for each of the playoff teams. And if you were to draw a line, you know, it should be an increasing um, bottom left, upper right correlation line. That doesn't appear to be a line. As a matter of fact, you can do the statistical analysis, which I no, did. You can do and, the statistical analysis. <laughs> okay. I can. <laughs> and the correlation coefficient is only. 0 oh, yeah. 0.18, which is bad. It's basically there is no correlation. Really, you, you get small correlation around 0.25 to 0.3, and then obviously 100% correlation means it's going to happen all the time. But this, once again, all it's a of coin this flip means for, turn on the TV or go to the stadium and watch postseason baseball because anything is possible. Yes, and I love that. Okay, quick break, very quick break, because we've got to get to our predictions to tell you that uh, I'm going to take my own break, take a couple weeks away from figments. This is the 25th episode of the two types uh, and get refreshed. And I'll be back on October 25th with uh, more figments on reality and some non-political commentary on whatever is happening. I don't even want to think about what might be happening other than postseason baseball at that time. And then I'll come back to uh on november 1st to figments the power of imagination trying to entertain and inspire with an extraordinary guest uh talking about i imagine effective leadership happens to be my daughter who uh, didn't get the gene because she's a much better leader and one of the very experienced military and civilian leader and it will tie into what i've said before about afghanistan so please tune in to that so um Back to baseball. Let's talk about the lineup, the bracket. Here it is, not filled in. We don't know until tomorrow when they start. Um, the, the big disappointment as I look at where the starting palette for 
postseason baseball is that there were no play-in games today. And so yesterday, there could have been two play-in games to the play-in game in the AL East and a game 163 in the National League West. And none of that happened. Tell me about your Sunday, Ross. How was that? Did you oh, watch any well, baseball yesterday? I sure did. It was, I was in baseball heaven. Um, I'm so glad that Major League Baseball decided to start all the games at oh, the same absolutely. time. Yeah. That way there's no so advantage. Let me explain you know that to the wants. folks. Huh? Let okay. me explain that. On the last day of the season, the only time during the year, maybe on opening day they try to do it a little bit, but every game starts within five or ten minutes of each other. So there are no spoiler alerts required, and it all matters to the very end. Go ahead. So I had four devices going. I was watching the Mariners on DVR. I had my laptop with the, the Red Sox game on. I had the iPad with the Yankees game on. I had my cell phone with the uh, <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays game on. And then when yeah. that one, you know, sort of was a blowout, then I switched over to the Cardinals and, and saw their final game. So it was it was great and it was exciting until Shohei Otani hit a leadoff home run and dashed my hopes and I was swearing at the screen and then they scored again and then two uh, more in the next inning. So it was four nothing before you knew it. But even then, I, you know, I've watched the Mariners enough to know that they can come back. It's only a second inning. They're down four. Yeah. They can come back and they have. Uh, and I was encouraged when the Red Sox were down 5-1 and the Yankees and the Rays were playing a scoreless game. Again, and then the uh, Rays are killer, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but in the end of, of the day, you know, Red Sox pulled it out in the top of the ninth with a two-run home run. The Yankees pulled it out in the bottom of the ninth with a walk-off single. Yeah. The Mariners lost. The Blue Jays lost. So there's no play-in game. And what the Blue, uh, Blue Jays won. But because uh, Yankees won, and but Red Sox won. Of all the teams that aren't in the playoffs, that belong in the playoffs, I think the Blue Jays are are really up there. They had an extraordinary year under very difficult circumstances with three different home parks yes. because of COVID. And, um, and, they, and I think they've got a bright future. My biggest disappointment is that the New York Yankees are in it at all. Because <laughs> I go back, uh, the Brewers and Braves play on Friday. October 8th at uh, now American Family Field. It will be the Braves' first playoff game in Milwaukee since game seven of the World Series in 1958, where they lost the Yankees and lost the series having won in 57. And I'm still mad, just to be clear. Uh, as a six-year-old boy, I listened to that game on the radio in my father's 57 Ford. I'm still upset about that. But, well, and that, um, that points out another uh, part of my theory is that your team had two great pitchers. The Milwaukee Braves had uh, Warren Spahn and Johnny Sane, right? Spahn and Sane and Sane pray, for and pray for rain. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so they were able to be dominant during that time with those two guys that could throw uh, five games between them in that era. I wonder what their arms looked like later in life. <laughs> yeah. So the truth of the matter is they didn't, people weren't throwing as hard and they weren't stressing their arms physically the, yeah. the way they are now. Sort of the extreme pitching in the era is really, it's extreme. And it puts a lot of uh, stress on the arms. And we've talked so about the importance of pitching. Let me get to my picks, which um, are mostly gut feel. And uh, of course, uh, let's start at the end where I picked the Milwaukee Brewers to win the World Series because I want the Milwaukee Brewers to win the World Series because I'm going to the World Series. I don't know if I told you, I entered two sweepstakes and I'm pretty sure that I've got to win one of those. And I'll be <laughs> at, a, at a game somewhere with airfare and hotel taken care of by Publishers Clearinghouse or somebody. I'm not sure it is. Um, and that, uh, I got to look at my slides to remember my logic. I picked St. Louis in the wild card game against the Dodgers because LA chasing those unbelievable uh, Giants has just had to keep the pedal to the metal so long that at some time the rubber band breaks. And they lost Muncie yesterday. They've got some questions in pitching. It's only one game. But if I were going to pick an outlier, I'd pick the, I'd pick the Cardinals. And um, 
neither of us picked, picked the White Sox as we said. I, I have not getting to the ALCS, but I find Tampa, um, boy, they're just relentless. They, they're uh, uh, at the plate. They're a powerhouse. And again, they made that, that trade that enabled what they, the uh, lineup they put together. So I, th I think Tampa's there. Having said that, by the time they get to the World Series against the Milwaukee Brewers in my dreams, um, then they're out of, uh, they, they run into pitching and that they can't beat. I realize it's a uh, folly perhaps to pick against the Giants this year, but I do it anyway, because I want the Brewers to win. So let's take a look at um, your predictions. It had to be hard for you not to go with your heart and advance the Cardinals all the way. Well, the Cardinals are, going to LA and they're playing yeah. against the Dodgers and the pitcher is Max Scherzer, who is the most dominant pitcher in either league this year. He's got like a one point something ERA with the Dodgers and undefeated with them. And he's a St. Louis native. And I just don't see the Cardinals winning that game. If they do great, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. But my heart is with the Cardinals. My mind tells me they're going to lose that game. And going back to the dominant pinching thing, my prediction is LA all the way through. Uh, Brave, Brewers are going to beat the Braves because of Brewers' dominant pitching. pitching. And I feel like in the, the American League, um, Yankees will win the wild card because Garrett Cole is a better pitcher than Nathan Avaldi. Mm -hmm. Although mm -hmm. I have some friends who will think otherwise, <laughs> big Red Sox fans. And then uh, the Yankees are going to lose to the Blue Jays. Blue Jays have had um, no, uh, not the Blue Tampa Jays. Bay Rays. The Rays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Rays have had their number for the last two years, and uh, they're going to keep winning. But then they'll run into the Houston Astros, who I think have the best combination of starting pitching and um, offense to, to take them to the World Series. But not as good as the Dodgers. I'm yeah. picking the Dodgers to win. Are, are they still stealing signs in Houston? I, I don't follow them <laughs> no. <very> closely. <laughs> no. Uh, so two things quickly about the, the Cardinals winning streak. There was a great fan graphs article last week about what's the relationship predictive value between a long winning streak and how you'll do in the playoffs. Yep. Is that going to carry you into the playoffs? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. There's no indication yep. that it will. Okay. And then another one related to the, the cheating is that I don't know if I mentioned this in our first episode, but there was a study on fan graphs that indicated the cheating really didn't help the Astros that much because there were so many false positives yeah. that yeah. you're swinging at, at pitches that you're sure is a strike, right? Well, no, it's not. I mean, I'm sure is a fastball. No, it's a curveball, and you look like a fool. And so the overall effect of that advantage is really not very big. Not an advantage. Yeah, it had to be a huge yeah. distraction, too, and it's such a mental game. Well, sadly, we're out of time. We have to get together at some point, maybe in spring training, to review our predictions and see how right or wrong we were. Um, I will tell you, as I think about my own figment, you can tell me your base postseason figment. If the Brewers don't advance, I'd love to see Wainwright and Molina together in a game seven. Um, and I think Yadier Molina is one of my favorite players ever, even though he kicks our butt sometimes. So what's your what's your postseason dream, your figment? Well, I would love to see uh, Wainwright and Molina in a in a game seven again. Um, yeah. They've done that, though. So that's yeah, sort of yeah. uh, I've been but there, done that kind point. of a thing. Yeah. Uh, one of my past figments that's ever going to happen is to see Felix Hernandez pitch yeah. in a playoff game in Seattle. But, you know, he's retired now. So I guess I'm just thinking, not this year, but going forward, I just want to see the Mariners in a playoff Get game in Seattle sometime during my lifetime. Well, I hope that comes true for you. Okay, Ross, thanks. It's always a pleasure. We're going to enjoy too, the sir. next few weeks and uh, we'll see how right or wrong we were and we'll enjoy it either way. All right. Have a good trip. All right. Thanks. Folks, that is the end of episode 25 of Various Flavors of Figments, and um, it, hap it goes by so quickly, always. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Figments are brought to you by Think Tech Hawaii. We're all nonprofit in this. Don't make any money as citizen journalists, as uh, Jade Fidel likes to say, 
hopefully we provide both entertainment and um, information. And I'd like to remind you that as a nonprofit, Think Tech Hawaii can use your support, financial, not just emotional, financial. And let me close with my usual aloha and go Brewers. <laughs>